So following our RTX 3080 Founders Edition and ASUS RTX 3080 Tough Reviews, today we'll be taking a closer look at yet another add-in board partner card. This is the Zotac RTX 3080 Trinity. Right out of the gate, I can tell you that the gaming performance between these three cards isn't drastically different from one another to make a buying decision based on performance alone, although we will be talking about that. The real differentiation then lies in how these cards look, sound, cool, how they're built, and any quirks or features they may have. And yes, that was a Doug DeMiro reference. The Zotac RTX 3080 Trinity is a 2.5 slot card, which is 0.2 slots thinner than the ASUS Tough on paper, but it's actually a few millimeters thicker, making it significantly fatter than Nvidia's two slot Founders Edition. It is, however, the longest of the three, measuring 12.5 inches or 318 millimeters long. For most of us, that would warrant some bragging rights, but in the GPU world, you'll definitely want to check clearance in your case before pulling the trigger on the 3080 Trinity. The card is black and gray from head to toe, except for the silver stickers on the triplet of fans that only ramp up once the GPU temp rises above 55 degrees Celsius. I don't mind the stickers, but I do wish the fan blades had a matte finish rather than the glossy plastic that you see here, which kind of cheapens the look IMO. Fortunately, they won't be seen much when installed in most systems. The new fans sport 11 blades each that allegedly increase airflow by up to 10% compared to their last gen cooler, and the semi-open plastic shroud features a sharp angular design with hexagonal cutouts around the fans that give it a unique look. Zotac's active fan control also lets users control the RPM of each fan independently to strike the optimal balance for cooling and noise. Beneath the fans is a large heatsink that spans well beyond the PCB, with seven copper heat pipes arranged in a new layout for more direct GPU contact. On the side, there's a raised addressable RGB area with Zotac gaming branding that I think would look cleaner if it just said Zotac or had their logo with no text at all. Here we can also see the dual 8-pin power plugs that land right smack in the middle of the card, which is always an awkward spot to see cables running to, but at least you don't have to use Nvidia's funky 12-pin adapter. The metal die-cast backplate is partially ventilated and features an attractive addressable RGB Zotac logo, but I could easily do without the cheesy slogans that board partners like to put on their cards, as desperate marketing attempts should stop once you open up the box. At the rear, you get three DisplayPort 1.48 ports and one HDMI 2.1 port, same as with the RTX 3080 FE. It's worth noting that the PCB on this card is almost a reference design. Since Zotac added a module for RGB and fan control, it's unclear whether that'll cause compatibility issues with reference GPU water blocks, so you may want to choose a 100% reference RTX 3080, or one that you know has a supported block if you're planning to use it in a custom loop. Potentially crippling usability for some fan control and unicorn vomit doesn't seem like a worthy trade-off, especially with all the rumors that RGB doesn't actually improve improve performance, but of course we'll have to wait for the proper benchmarks to validate those claims. I tested the RTX 3080 Trinity against all the other cards we've featured in our Ampere reviews thus far, including the ASUS RTX 3080 Tough, the 3080 FE, and the Aorus RTX 2080 Ti Extreme, all running stock. The Trinity ships with the same 1710 MHz GPU boost clock as the Founders Edition, which is notably slower than the 1815 MHz boost of the ASUS Tough model. All GPUs were benchmarked with a stock Ryzen 9 3950X and the rest of the hardware you see here. When it comes to power draw, the Trinity consumed slightly less power than the other 3080s in the Division 2 4K benchmark, pulling the same peak wattage as the RTX 2080 Ti. Again, Nvidia recommends a 750 watt power supply for the RTX 3080 to be safe, but you can probably run the card with slightly less than that if you have a low TDP CPU and aren't planning any aggressive overclocks. Just be aware that the closer you get to using the bare minimum wattage, the more limited you'll be when upgrading down the line. After monitoring temperatures in a 15 minute run of Unigen Heaven 4.0 at 1440p, the RTX 3080 Trinity hit a max of 74 degrees Celsius, which falls right between the cooling performance of the 3080 Tough and 3080 FE. The Tough card is a cooling beast that the other 3080s simply can't match. While Zotac's thermals are acceptable here, bear in mind that these numbers are likely to increase in a closed chassis, so make sure you have a well-ventilated case with decent airflow for this card. The trade-off here is noise, with the 3080 Trinity running noticeably quieter than the other two 3080s. That being said, the Tough and Founders Edition cards are already plenty quiet, so Zotac is just showing off at this point, but it's still impressive nonetheless. Looking at GPU core clock speeds, the Zotac 3080 saw a max clock frequency of 1995 MHz and an average speed of 1897 MHz, which sounds about right. Lower than the cooler factory overclocked 3080 Tough, but higher than the hotter running 3080 FE. You could probably overclock the Trinity to match or even surpass the speeds of the ASUS 3080 Tough, 
but you may need to increase the fan speed to avoid approaching the dreaded 80 degrees Celsius mark. For our performance testing, all game titles were tested at 1920 by 1080, 2560 by 1440, and 3840 by 2160 using NVIDIA's pre-launch press driver version 465.16 for the RTX 3080s and Wickle driver 456.38 for the RTX 2080 Ti. After viewing all the benchmarks, we'll compare each card's overall performance and finally talk about which one you should buy. So after combining all the average frame rates across our six game titles, at 1080p, our RTX 3080s saw modest 10 to 12% gains over the RTX 2080 Ti due to some bottlenecking with the stock Ryzen 9 3950X. Gamers targeting the highest possible refresh rates at this resolution should consider overclocking their CPU or pairing the 3080 with a fast gaming processor, like one of Intel's new core CPUs, if they're not committed to AMD's AM4 platform. Just note that if you do, your PCIe Gen 4 RTX 3080 will be running on PCI 3.0 lanes until you upgrade to one of Intel's unreleased Rocket Lake chips that will allegedly have full PCIe 4 support. You'll also need a Z490 motherboard that supports the new protocol as well. Users on AMD's B550 or X570 chipsets will have full PCIe Gen 4 support for Ampere right out of the gate. As you can see, the performance difference between the RTX 3080 isn't very exciting, with Nvidia edging out its board partners ever so slightly. The performance between the Trinity and Tough cards is also so close that Zotac's 0.4% gain here falls within margin of error. At 1440p, the Ampere cards pull ahead of the 2080 Ti by 15% and effectively see a three-way tie. Some serious overclocking would have to happen to really see these cards pull ahead of their competitors by any meaningful amount. At our most GPU-bound resolution of 2160p, the RTX 3080 delivers 20 to 22% more frames on average than the 2080 Ti while costing considerably less. The 3080 Trinity takes a slight backseat compared to the other 3080s here, but still delivers strong and consistent performance. With pure gaming performance being so identical across all three RTX 3080s, how does the RTX 3080 Trinity stack up in other areas? Well, looks are entirely subjective, but for what it's worth, I do prefer the design of the Founders Edition and Tough Cards. Less glossy plastic and more minimal branding would have helped Zotac here. And while I have no concerns over the Trinity's build quality, the full plastic housing and again those glossy fans make it look and feel less premium than the FE with its big boy heat sinks and the Tough with its aluminum plated shroud. In an average mid-tower, the Trinity is also the most likely to pose clearance issues due to its extremely long cooler, despite its reasonable 2.5 slot design. Small form factor enthusiasts should probably steer clear entirely, especially until we get confirmation if it'll even support a reference water block. While the card proved to be the least power hungry of the 3080s, it was only by a small margin. Similarly, it being the clear winner in our sound test would have been more exciting if the other 3080s weren't already super quiet cards. That leaves thermals. Zotac's cooler shows a marked improvement over the 3080 FE, but it doesn't blow us away, and we'll need more airflow than the RTX 3080 Tough to ensure it doesn't get too warm in a closed case environment. 
Right now, all RTX 3080s are sold out everywhere, and there's really no telling when they'll be back in stock or for what prices. Hypothetically, if all three RTX 3080s that we tested today were available for the same price, my choice would personally be between the Founders Edition and Tough Cards, the FE for its quality and design, and the Tough Card for its exceptional cooling. The Trinity doesn't have any deal breakers, but it also doesn't excel in any one area to make it stand out among the rest. A jack of all trades, master of none, so to speak. However, if you can find one for a bit cheaper than the other models, or if it holds its stock better, that might be enough for users to live with its caveats while still getting a smoking fast GPU at the end of the day. But you guys let me know what you think. Out of the three RTX 3080s, which one would you go with and why? Support our continued testing and coverage of the RTX 30 series by heading to our store, bitwit.tech, and picking up some of our quality items, like the classic heatsink tee, one of our new zipper hoodies, or a Lyle Triblend shirt that offers 20% more offensiveness. You can also offend the like button until it turns blue. Subscribe for more content on the way, and I'll see you guys in the next video.